We made it happen though. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. did make it happen. Yeah, we but did. yeah, no, audio scares me. It still does. I hate it. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's just way wrong. easier than video. Disagree. I really? Mean, you yeah. need way less. I'm sorry. You need way less room on your computer. Yeah, I guess so. I don't. It just doesn't like music. Dude. My brain doesn't make sense in that. I really? Know, does, yeah, I'm not like musical in that sense. I'm the other. So I mean, I'm I'm like a, I like try and dabble in both. Because I mostly because I want to if when I deal with somebody like you know if I, we're making a video yeah like I down that's one of the biggest reasons I downloaded Premiere because then I can like I mean I can't like I'm not like at your level but I can at least say something Do where some, you, yeah. you know like what I'm talking about yeah no I'm yeah. the same I can't play guitar at all but I can yeah. play it enough that when we're on set and be like okay it's yeah, a yeah fret I know what a string is I <laughs> yeah, know yeah, what yeah, yeah, tremolo like picking is yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah I have some you, sense of if you of don't you're like kind of useless yeah you got it like that you know what's weird. It's like, that's like any kind of art. Yeah. You have to know everything, a little bit about everything, especially yeah. now. Yeah. But then when you go back to like legacy people, like this is more so maybe in music, but I don't know, maybe, because I don't know if you've ever worked with like people who were like are, you know, back in the day, they'd give you a grant for like however many thousands of dollars to like do some video shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that was like regular. Yeah. And um, you probably didn't have to know as much. Yeah. I don't know. I guess you would rel like... Relative to today, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, it's like you didn't need to know as much music theory to make a like, progressive metal song back in the day. Yeah. But the theory just keeps escalating and progressing. So you would have yeah. been at the well, cutting edge of your day and like, with less I information. Mean, dude, like back in the day, like in the 90s and shit, yeah. like they, a record label would just give you like a million dollars. Yeah. And like nobody – you ha in, in that budget, they had a graphic design guy. They yeah. had a video guy. They had – like now it's like you better know everything. Yeah. That's weird. It's one thing I've noticed, especially with like uh, – Maybe more kind of like older dudes who are like in the scene. Mm -hmm. They like don't know how to make their own. Every like I had to. I was yeah. like, man, I better learn how to use Photoshop. <laughs> you know, what yeah. I mean? or I'm gonna end up with some trash. Hell you know? yeah, that's what always happens. I don't. Do you run into that? Sometimes. Um, yeah. Fire, dude. Uh, we'll dive back in episode 18 oh, before we get in too far, dude. <laughs> I'm with Kane from Vomit Fourth. Kane, I know he was a vocalist. We met a couple years ago. Recently did a music video. Yeah. And been hanging out, dude. We were yeah. chatting about. Uh, differences and budgets <laughs> over the years, <laughs> yeah, 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 which is probably more insider than outsider. But yeah. yeah, it is wild to like reflect on even as money is inflated and the budgets were still higher back then. Yeah, and it's like the money's worth less now or whatever. Yeah, and it's yeah, and tighter. The, the budgets are uh, way tighter. Yeah, <laughs> way and it's expected tighter. that yeah we're doing more legwork yeah. on our own and yeah. But I don't yeah. know. I think it's more. There's the flip side, right? Because in the old days, the industry could empower you, but yeah. the industry had to pick you to put you yeah. in that platform. Yeah. And now it's like you can, in theory, do enough legwork to get that platform yourself. I've, it's basically – But I would say that it's basically like the other way around. I mean, not for every okay, band. Yeah. Not for every band. Yeah. But, I mean, there's a lot of bands right now that are like popping. Mm -hmm. Like my band is on a bigger label. Mm -hmm. or Not the biggest label in the world, but we're on a great label that's really mm -hmm. big. But um, I wouldn't say that we were in a position – where we could kind of pick and choose, but I know there's like people who are my friends who are in bands that are like bigger than us that yeah. are not on a big as label as big as ours, and they are just they can do it. They make way more money. They do whatever, and and there's the bigger labels are kind of like chomping at those those. They're like, mm -hmm. hey man, I really want to deal, you know, work with these bands and stuff. Interesting. Like that. Yeah, it's 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 weird how the music industry is. I don't yeah. know how how video is or anything like that. I don't feel like I know it either. The other, uh, you're a good person to ask this too. Yeah. Someone asked me one time why we don't get uh, video production credits on the back end the way audio production guys do. So if you produce huh. a Vomit Forth song, right, and you yeah. get 5% on the back end, what is a normal yeah. percentage on the back end for a producer? I don't know. I, I'd have to look. Um, I'd have to look because we do have that. I don't know what it but is. Let's, yeah, I know, it's, I know it exists and it's yeah. normal that whoever, yeah, it's not is weird. in the writing room, produces yeah. mixed masters, gets... 2% of the stream. I don't, yeah. say, I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's something but like that. But I, I don't think it's a thing for video. But you'd think that the it YouTube streams would yeah. be worth something. I think... I, I And I've seen a lot of YouTubers, like... Mm -hmm. I don't know a lot of them, to yeah. be honest. But I've seen... And maybe it's just all front. But I've seen a lot of YouTubers just come up and go crazy. Yeah. You know, like, people... These people, like, are buying houses because they've yeah. like, top scariest mansions yep. you've never visited yeah you know I mean? like, there's tons like, of money there chills yeah. chills is definitely doing all right right now yeah he's like i have a <laughs> million dollars yeah what would you do you know what i mean but um i don't know if the industry has necessarily caught on to that yet or maybe they're a little bit ahead of the game and they realize that like because i've also noticed a lot of the youtubers are going to patreon doing things like that because the stream revenue yeah has gone down so much Just ad revenue as a whole yeah. has gone down as it's been yeah, more so saturated yeah it's hard to say man i feel like i feel like you should get it 
uh, even if it is like I don't know who the fuck you would talk yeah. to, and I'm not the guy who's gonna yeah. make that claim. I, I don't I don't but know it, either. Yeah, it was an interesting. I was just talking <laughs> yeah. to uh, the other day to Eric DiCarlo who did the Lorna Shore video for To the Hellfire. Okay, that now has 15 yeah. million views, and it's like the song did a lot, but the video does some lifting in that too. Oh, absolutely. And it's like yeah, yeah. If uh, yeah, I mean it that's, that's tough because that video is crazy. Um, I just don't want to specify him because, yeah, I don't want to be like anyone owes him money or, yeah. Well, not, yeah, yeah, not yeah. Where the, no, but not I where get, this came from. But, I get what you're saying. Uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, that's not, those are those are those numbers, Lorna Shore numbers, kind of in any way, yeah. are nothing to like scoff at. You know yeah. what I mean? They're killing yeah. it. And yeah. it's like, bro. <laughs> so that, yeah, the video would have <laughs> made know? X amount of dollars yeah. in AdSense and revenue. And yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Shout out Moke. Shout out. Um, I don't he, he's, he's in, uh, he's in Lorna Shore. He plays bass. He's like the best. He's Hell yeah, little, he's little, And Austin, the drummer. Yeah. He's, he's great, too. I feel like they're a group of guys I got like a mutual friends with, but I'm not, I don't actually know Dude, any of them. But. The, you know what? I ended up hanging out with them one time. Um, and this is this is a statement to that band. And uh, musically, it was never really my thing. But we're on the same label now. And I tweeted at them when we were in Chicago at the same time. Just mm-hmm. like... Kind of half is like, because I, I had never met them. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, yo, come hang out. Hell yeah. In the last couple of months? Uh, kind of. Yeah, yeah. A little bit ago now. But I was like, whoa. And it's weird because a lot of people I've met, including you now, are like, yeah. Because that was how I was. Like, friends of friends. I don't really know those kids, mm-hmm. but I guess I kind of do. Yeah. And um, I guarantee if you had a situation where, like, the friends of friends and you were around them, you'd be like, these kids are, like, sick. Yeah. They're, they're chillers. Yeah. They're, they're awesome. That's, that's yeah, what I understand. Yeah. 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 Um, Homies. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, I'll start off with a music video. So we, yeah, crack it Sorry. open, boy. Yeah. Get hydrated. <laughs> uh, so start off with a music video. So we filmed a video for Pain Tolerance uh, a couple months ago. Awesome. Uh, I think the first part there is we filmed it in like three months apart. We filmed it in two yeah. days, Psycho. a couple months apart. Yeah. So day one, we're doing like a, a graveyard, a cemetery, and then mm-hmm. in your basement doing narrative stuff, getting some yeah. blood going. Uh, I think that was mostly your idea to yeah. uh, create a vision. So there's, there's a couple, like, we have done four music videos for that record, which mm-hmm. is kind of, in my opinion, I think it's a lot of videos, mm-hmm. but I love video. Yeah. And, um, there is like a overarching narrative and, um, but it's weird the way that vomit forth works, uh, because we're so spread out. Mm-hmm. A lot of the conceptual stuff is kind of left to me. And, um, so I've been kind of creating that narrative and that's why I thought it would be really cool. Also, it, you probably didn't know this, but there was like I was like I don't know if I'm ever gonna be able to get these everybody in the same room and mm-hmm. be able to do band shots. So yeah. I gotta have something because they gave us money. I gotta get it figured out. Yeah, <laughs> but, but yeah, I had a sneaky feeling. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But um, yeah, we made it, dude. That video was awesome. We yeah, the the early stuff. You went to my mom's house. You mm-hmm. met my mom. Yep. Um, shout out, shout out, Mel. <laughs> uh, and yeah, we had, but that was really cool and fun. Um. Yeah, I hurt my neck. Mm-hmm. Remember that? Yeah, I did. Sucked. I forgot about that. Yeah, when you were laying on the, the yeah, concrete. And I was just like, yeah, <laughs> and you were like, "Give me a little bit more stuff," and I was like, "Yeah," <laughs> was covered so in fake th- blood, <laughs> feeling like it's real blood. Yeah. And I was like, "I hope I die." Yeah, I hope I die for real. It looked good. Yeah, that translates oh, to camera. It <laughs> you looked desire to die. Honestly, was... I'm so happy with that video. So uh, happy. With hell it. Yeah. I mean, I love it. Remember what was Nick? When we were in the chat, Nick was like, we got to get rid of that long shot. Yeah. It was like the shot that grounded the whole video. I was like, Nick, I love you. I'm not even saying this to be me. Yeah. We got to keep the shot. <laughs> I'm glad you did. That was one that I was like, oh, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news yeah, here. Yeah. But like, I'm going I'm to stick up for that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was tough for me mentally to keep like the camera stuff in my brain for three oh, months. yeah. Because as we were coming back to shoot the full band stuff a couple months later, it was like, it was brutal. fuck, how did I film? Like, how did we make that? Because it was such a weird, like, yeah. slow shutters count. Like, yeah, weird thing. Yeah. I feel like it was good um, that on the on the narrative stuff, we did have a bit of, like, it's all, like we had a, we had playback. Yeah. Like, I was kind of synced up. Yep. So I think that, hopefully that helped you. I, I think know. so, yeah. I know a little bit about editing, not, like, a lot. But yeah. I know enough that I'm like, oh, okay, if you're syncing up, you know where you are. Yeah. The other yeah. big editing note there is that Nick... Uh, I find out on the day of that we don't use in ears. We don't like clicks. Yeah, it's not, yeah, not how we roll. Yeah. Which is, I think, normal for heavy bands. It's like a new thing that's yeah. happening. And I think your words were like, dude, he's a machine. Trust me. Yeah. And, and he every is. time I've heard that is like, yeah, it's, yeah okay, yeah. dude. No, I'll, I know. Be, I'll be busy later. Yeah, yeah. But it turned out perfect. The only part that was delayed at all was like the, the pause in the song, which yeah. makes sense. You add an that's extra happen, yeah. moment in there. Yeah. And then it was like I would just adjust the second half of the song, and then yeah. perfect, everything Dude. worked out. Nick so, is, yeah, machine. Nick truly is a psycho. Yeah, 
in like, all the best ways. Yeah, or, did, <laughs> yeah, the yeah, ones yeah. I know of. You can. Did I ever tell you about how we track the the record? I don't think so. So Nick yeah. Nick goes like, oh, okay, what are the what are the what are the beats per minute? And he has like he's probably sitting in his room listening to like uh, like the real McCoy or something. Okay. Do you know, do they they I don't know if they sing that song, but all the songs that are like uh, you know pump up the jams, pump up the jams. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like he loves that. That <laughs> stuff is like. You would think he listens to like, well, he does listen to beatdown and stuff, but like that doesn't get him going. Like eighties, like, 80s, like dude, you play, jazzercise music, yeah, or it's like more so like nineties, nineties kind of dance club. You put on Labouche in front of him, and he's gonna like run through a wall. He's but how he That's does so it, funny. he's like, okay, I'm gonna get the beats beats per minute. He gets the BPMs ma- mapped out. He goes to the studio before anybody. No scratch tracks with the guitars and tracks the record. Jesus, yeah, he's so psycho. He's so I, – I love him. He's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> if it works, it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, but that's probably why the it worked out like that. Yeah. Because that's how we track seating. Yeah. Like I didn't even – we didn't even – he did it like I think the same way we recorded the video like a couple weeks or months before. The drums that's were just kind of done. Room. Yeah. Yeah, and then we just like did it. And then you guys – like are you ever in the <clears throat> same room recording and writing or are you recording and writing we cross used, country? We all? used to be. Um, with the old lineup, we yeah. had a, we, our lineup was like kind of, it was Connecticut and Long Island. It mm. was like, I don't know if, do you know Ricky? He oh, was in no, like cast and blood and stuff. I don't know. Uh, Rick Braille, okay. Ricky Braille. And then I don't know. Tyler. Well, if so, I do my bad, he's, I mean, they're the OG members of the band. Um, okay. they, they, they quit the band and then, um, so now it's just, I'm writing and then Bailey who lives in Virginia is writing. Mm. And what we do is we just pre pro. Yeah. And then, um, we're kind of adapting to that because Nick Nick sometimes is like, oh man, but I, like I don't know. I'm like, yo, we're gonna get there. You yeah. know what I mean? Just like, yeah, trust us for now. Yeah. You know? So, um, yeah, it's weird. It's weird to not have that anymore. We don't practice. <laughs> we don't. I guess you're touring yeah. up. So you just got home from tour ten ish yeah. days ago, and you're leaving in another couple of days. Oh no, we got. I was it ten days. I don't even know because my life is so it's <laughs> some. Yeah, <laughs> we went out. We were we were yeah we were home. We went on tour with. Uh, like Sanguisugabag and Internal Bleeding and Mutilatred. Mm-hmm. And then we were home for a very short amount of time. Then we went out for another month. And then we, I think we've been home for like a week. Maybe. Do you understand how many shows you're playing a year? If there's 365 days in a year? Oh, yeah. So we're probably doing like less than a school year. Probably like a hundred and some 110 100. or something. Okay. So uh, six months-ish on the yeah, road and six months yeah. on? That's what I would... I mean that's and that's my ideal. Yeah. Um, just because as I think we need to grind hard as we yeah. get bigger. But um yeah, tour was crazy. It was nuts. And you know what's was even crazier is we debuted the video while we were on tour. Yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> because we did two tours right in a row. Yeah. And I remember that we had like a couple of days off and they were like, Oh yeah, the tour the video's coming out then and I was like, Oh mm-hmm. man, I gotta pump the social like because, you know, I, have you ever been have you ever been on, on tour? Uh, like, like two weeks total. So okay, like a yeah, week but here and a week there. That's still enough, and though. I, yeah, I feel like I know, but like, yeah. I'm sure if I did a month on the road, I'd be like, oh, I had no idea yeah. what I was talking about. Well, so, it, yeah. it, no, even a week. I mean, it's still fun for a week. Yeah, and then I say I say it's still fun for two weeks. And I in our current band with our current lineup, we have a really great dynamic. Yeah, so I'll say it's fun for three weeks, <laughs> and then um, but it's like you start to lose track of what day it is, yep. and then like you. Get an email from from somebody and be like, "Hey, you need to post about this because this is your band." And I'm like, "Oh my, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah." So yeah, tours, tours, man. How do you stay grounded amidst all the travel? You said six months on the road is, um, and six months home is ideal, but like to me, it was always hard to live on the road and then come home and both places end up feeling foreign when you adjust to them. And I think it really depends on what how your how your home base is. Our yeah. home base, Dell and I's home base, is does is. Uh, Artie feels kind of foreign. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, You know what? It's, it's really – this might get a little deep, but uh, it's strange because, like, me having a home has never been a permanent mm-hmm. – not never, but, like, in my adult life, I've struggled with having a home okay. for a while, a lot. So it's not that crazy to me. Interesting. I guess having yeah. Dell as a companion on it kind of makes home travel with you in a sense where she is a part yeah, of she, home. Yeah, and she, of she also helps a lot with, like – the stuff that, because I get when I get overwhelmed, uh, I start to forget, mm-hmm. and uh, you know she has to handle like the important stuff. Like 
shaking down a promoter to get paid, yeah. stuff like that. The nitty gritty um, that needs to get yeah. done and is not fun for yeah. anyone to and, do. And honestly, we've dealt, we have a really great team. So like the promoters are really u- usually very, very good. And when they're not, they shut, you know, our manager, Mark and booking agent, Dan always hear from me when I, when, <laughs> and I feel bad for hitting them up, but I'm always just like, yo, this dude, I don't like him. Yeah. <laughs> like, can we never work with this dude ever again? Yeah. Cause I just want to slap him. What like percentage of, so you played 30 shows I don't know, in the last yeah. 30 shows mm-hmm. were 28 of them good bookers and two of them dickheads. Is yeah. It, is that about? Fair? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's been more than 30. So there's been a couple more guys that I didn't really like, but, yeah. um, yeah, it's been – the scene is in a really great place. Hell yeah. Right now, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and also it's a bit foreign to me because I come from hardcore mm-hmm. and now I'm in a death metal band, which mm-hmm. is like um, really completely different, mm-hmm. you know. And and I think we kind of incorporate a different demographic yeah. than I would usually even come to death metal shows. And I don't think we're the only band, but I know that we do. And um, so – it's an adjustment, but it's uh, – I think it's really cool because it's helping, I think, both demographics kind of learn more. And yeah. they treat bands differently and, and better. And, I, and uh, yeah, it's been really good. It's been really overall very good Hell yeah. in, in that regard. It's been really good. Hell, yeah. yeah. When uh, Going back to kind of the origins of Element Fourth, when does it start? Oh, so I met you a couple of years ago, and we were working mm-hmm. on a much softer, different project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then recently, Vomit Fourth comes to my attention, and mm-hmm. I was like, oh, Kane is a new project. And it's yeah. like, hang on. No, no, no. This isn't the yeah, new project. No. This is the old one, and that yeah. was the side project yeah, that I was yeah. working on. Uh, yeah, so where does Vomit Fourth start? I had to do a little dive to oh, familiarize man. myself. but Yeah, yeah I'm sure 2017, kind okay. of. I wasn't in the band at that point. Right. It was just Ricky, our old guitarist, and Nick jamming death metal. Hell yeah. And uh, they were like, we need a singer. And Ricky was sending me the songs just because we were friends. And I was like, oh, this is sick. And I would never sang okay. uh, um, in a band. And I was like, all right, uh, I can try. What did you do before in bands? Guitar. Okay. I'm like normally – well, I was. It's crazy. <laughs> like I was nor- – I was a guitarist for years and years and years. And okay. years. That's all I ever did. Yeah. But I was always kind of the guy in the band who like uh, – the creative i was like okay i have to write everything and do everything Mm -hmm. um unless i had joined another project but yeah so guitar is like where i came from and then i was like yo i'll try it just see how it goes and it sounded all right so Mm -hmm. we kept it going you know it was tough though tough wasn't easy on me vomit forth was not easy on me yeah yeah it was hard what was the yeah? Talk to me about the transition from going from guitarist to where you are still a quarterback of the band, so you're yeah. kind of creatively in the lead of it, but on yeah. stage you're not presented as the yeah. lead of it. And now you're the guy who's on stage with the mic as the the most memorable part of the band, oftentimes yeah. for people. It's yeah, what was that transition like? Hard, horrible. <laughs> I mean, I at that point when it first started, I had two other bands. Yeah, because um, I was always the guy who's in like a million bands, and mm-hmm. I was in a band before that that was like pretty active um, that I was kicked out of. That band sucked anyway, but uh, (laughs) I started like this new metal style band called Dilate, and then I started another kind of like metalcore style band called Bleed, Mm -hmm. and then uh, I joined Vomit Forth. The other two bands I was kind of like the guy in, Mm -hmm. um, and I loved both of them, but the people in the bands I don't think had the same vision as I did, so they both kind of just fell apart. Uh, not in a, like in a bad way. It just kind of like uh, the best fizzled. part of my job is that I don't have to be in a room with four oh, yeah, other so brains lucky. at all times. Yeah, <laughs> and like yeah, the idea that yeah. any band to me makes it off the ground is a miracle. Yeah, like, it's crazy. So the idea that any it's five crazy. people who are dumb enough and bold enough to want to pursue a band can then coexist yeah. together. Like it's it's not a, a passive and agreeable trait by nature. No. It's by nature to someone who said no, I'm going to take a chance on this. Yeah. And then to find yeah. five of those bold people and get them to all, yeah, yeah be able to say, like, yeah. It's, it's like tough. I said, it's a miracle to me that it ever yeah. works. Me, me too, especially with those bands, because with those, it was like, this is my brainchild. Well, yeah. one, well, Dilate, that was like, that was my brain. I was like, man, I want to do this. I'm going to yeah. see how it goes. And I wasn't even like ready to do it all the way. Like I was just kind of like pre-proing things, figuring it out. Yep. And then I sent it to my friend and he was like, this is awesome. Let's do it. And I was like, you are really a great front man. It's no brainer. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then it just kind of like... It might come back. Dialet might come back. We'll see. But um, yeah, then Bleed, it was more so like my friend. I was like, oh, you're like psycho like me. Um, you should just front a band because you're crazy. You know? <laughs> you know? And uh, obviously, I don't know why I thought that would be. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was, and it was. It was a good band. But, um, good know, stage just, presence, I guess. Work. Oh, yeah. He was getting psycho. him onto stage is always no, hard. No, that, that wasn't even that hard. 
Bernard, he, he, I mean, we were both like in horrible places in life and yeah. we were just like, yeah, let's do this. And then <laughs> I had to have known that it wasn't going to yeah. work forever, you know, but we played some great shows and it was a good band. So when does the corner turn for Vomit Forth then? Um, you know, it was crazy because we were all gigging at the same time, not touring crazy. I mean, I still had a job and stuff mm-hmm. and, uh, I, people really liked Vomit Forth and I didn't think they were going to, mm-hmm. because at this point I'm coming from hardcore, you know? Yeah. And a lot, like I know a lot of people now are like, yeah, Vomit Forth is like a hardcore death metal band. And they were even saying that in the beginning, but in the beginning I did not hear the hardcore at all. Okay. I was like, I don't even know what these kids are talking about. And people really liked it. It was really strange. We played our first show. It wasn't in- incredibly well attended, but I think we turned a lot of heads. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing with Nick too, who was like the other creative force in the band, he's really talented. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't know if you, if you saw our set at the Webster. Of course, yeah. He's like, I don't know how he does it. He stays crazy the whole time. And like, no one was doing that when in hardcore. You know okay. what I mean? So we were playing to like more hardcore. I think our first show was with like, it was a, I can't even remember. It was like a reunion show for an older Connecticut band who I actually like. And I can't even remember the name of it, but they were a good band. And, uh, we played, and I think people were just like, what? This is crazy. Nick is crazy. Like, yeah. he was just blasting. I was doing, like, you know, guttural stuff, which I don't think a lot of people were used to. Mm-hmm. And uh, just, I think it, it maybe, I don't know why. I think I think it was new to a lot of people. Yeah. And we just kind of kept going, but we didn't play a lot of hardcore shows. At the, after that, after our mm-hmm. first show, we did mostly, like, death metal shows and... uh almost kind of bar metal shows, you know, which are not ideal for me. I don't love doing that, but mm-hmm. we did it and it was fun. And then we, the turning point was a show at this place called Ralph's Rock Diner in Worcester. I don't okay. know if you know that place. I, I feel like I must have, oh. I don't know if I've been there, but I feel like I you should gotta have. Go. Or, yeah, but you gotta whatever. go. Yeah. It's so cool. It's like, it looks like a set from Tales from the Crypt. I don't oh, know yeah. if you ever saw that show. I it's like a either. 90s kind of like, it was on HBO. It's like a different horror story every night, but there's this guy called the Crypt Keeper and everything looks fucked up. Hell it's yeah. awesome. Hell yeah. <laughs> the place looks awesome. There's skulls yeah. everywhere. It's dope. That's it. Yeah. And uh, we played this tour with these kind of pop and death metal bands who I still really like. It was a band called Fetid and uh, Cerebral Rot was the other band. And um, I could be wrong, but I think Undeath played. I don't know if you know that band, but they are great. You should check them out if you haven't heard them. Oh, they're yeah. sick. Um, they're popping now. They're huge. This is before they were popping like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was the one where everyone was like, whoa, this is like a real, like these guys are like pretty good. Because mm-hmm. in death metal, they were like kind of a niche band. They were all, sorry, niche bands. They were all like kind of in their own little pocket of style, like that style. And we are not part of that. But they kind of looked at us and they're like, oh, whoa, this band's good. Mm -hmm. Even though we were playing a different style. And they were kind of like elitist, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So for us to see that they were nodding at us, I was like, whoa. Yeah. Maybe we should push this. Is it normal for, does it, is it a common version of a band to feel like they turned a corner at a live show? I feel like normally it's a song and then streams are what the momentum is. But it sounds like you're saying that you kind of felt it in the moment. Yeah. It's, it's really, I don't. Because this world was is still a little foreign to me, I don't mm. know. Yeah, um, I think that's the case uh, with streams or like the you know, you you drop the single and it's it's mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah, um, I think it's a version of it a lot. It's kind of hard because I had a I had an alt rock band that mm-hmm. I did too called Eyeball. I mean, I still do it. I love that band, but um, I dropped the first single and it was like nuts, went nuts, and then every other song did not do that great. Interesting, you know. Yeah. And so it's I know that feeling of like whoa, it's popping. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've had it on a couple projects, but I, I've had it enough times in my life to know that that's super fleeting yeah. and I don't really get that pumped on it anymore. Uh, it's great wisdom. Yes. Yeah. I, uh, I had the same thing as I yeah. first start shooting shows and the first time you mm-hmm. post a photo of a celebrity yeah. and it does, it's, yeah, hundreds and, of likes yeah, and it's, it's like, popping. holy hell. Yeah. And then, yeah, now I'm a couple of years past that and. Pretty quickly, it's like Instagram's algorithm changes and mm-hmm. the likes go away. Yeah. And it's like, did I get worse? And you have this moment of like, yeah, am horrible. I now bad or yeah. 
And it's like, no, Instagram changes. There are things change from photos to yeah. video. Like the world changes. Uh, and also it's like, I can't post celebrity metalcore celebrity a b yeah. or c every day like there's yeah. only so many of those that i can get access to yeah and also like i don't want to be only successful if i'm taking photos successful person exactly. i want to be successful in my own right yeah uh, so yeah i can relate to that kind of crisis of streams of like well the streams are good but like what yeah, does that even then mean? what yeah and it does it does monetize it does transfer Definitely, something yeah but at the same time i mean you know what's great and it's a testimony to your work too is uh a lot of people will hate on this especially other artistic people but it's like uh, you know, you, the biggest thing that you need to do, no matter what, if you get one like, if you get a million likes, um, focus on your content. And that's why I really wanted to work with you again, because your, your content is good. And I looked at the, you know, even the artists that you worked with that weren't vomit forth, they're not similar to us. I didn't go to you because you were like a death metal guy, you know, <laughs> I was like, yeah, Peter. Loves death metal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, you always put out good shit. Hell yeah. And because I feel like I, I, I can appreciate that about any artist of any kind. Mm-hmm. If you care about your craft, it's going to shine through. And the the algorithm, social media, it's very important. I'm not trying to like shit on that because if you're just getting nowhere on that, you're not going to – I mean you can – do stuff locally forever mm-hmm. maybe yeah you know but um it's fleeting yeah anyway. yeah but but at the same time there i've seen it on the other hand where people just tr- just concentrate on the social media so hard and you're paying for likes and you're paying for this stuff and then your content sucks mm-hmm. and it's like i will work with somebody personally whether you're a musician whether you're a videographer whether you're an artist if you care about your content Mm-hmm. You know, and I know I'm not like the end all be all. I'm not that great, but I think anybody who's worth their salt will do the same. You I know? appreciate that. Thank you. I think it's yeah. a flattering compliment. And yeah, I have the same thing of bands I work with. Of like, I don't necessarily care. Every song is my favorite song for the two weeks I'm working on it, mm-hmm. and oftentimes after that, it is no longer my favorite song. And yeah, I have a new favorite song. Yeah. But uh, so in that sense to me, the song is cool. I hope it's a song I enjoy. Yeah. But I'm way more interested in yeah, are the people passionate about this project? Are they excited to be here? Yeah. When we are filming the narrative stuff, are you happy to do another take? Are you throwing ideas at me? Or yeah. am I dragging through the mud going, Kane? Can you please <laughs> just like yeah. yeah? And so like, when you guys yeah. are excited, when we're on set with the band and everyone's kind of piping up like, Hey, what about this? What about yeah. this? And it's like, yeah, awesome. Yeah. We'll make it happen. And Cre- creativity begets creativity. Yeah. That's yeah. what I think. Like nerds, nerds about stuff will just flock. And like, <laughs> yeah. the re- you know what I mean? The real yeah. people will, will, yeah. will always be there. That's something that I've really found just through my, I'm not going to call it a career cause mm-hmm. it's not, but yeah. um, my like life as a musician mm-hmm. or, or just a creative person because I don't, I, I like, I, I was telling you before, like I have to learn how to edit. Yeah. I have to learn how to mix a little bit. I got it. So, you know, but, but that's how I feel about people who record our record or who make videos for us and stuff like that. Like, I'm not going to go with a cool name because they're cool. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to, if you're a nerd and you're down with it, like I got to, I got to vibe yeah. with you a little bit on that. If I can't, then I'm just like, what are we, yeah. cause I've gone down that road too, where I'm just like, oh yeah, this guy's like cool. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, everything you helped me do sucks. I hate it. I hate it. You know what yeah. I mean? Even if it is going to kill, I'm just like, I don't feel good putting this out. Mm-hmm. So that's a, that's a tough pill to swallow. I think yeah. for a lot of people, for yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. But you know, that's where we're at. <laughs> that's where, where we're at. It's, it, I think art is in such a weird spot. Mm-hmm. Like the music scene's in a great spot, but like, I don't know if you've noticed this where, Kind of the bigger, I don't know, as a videographer, if you would, like the kind of you're seeing a lot more of the mainstream or people I would normally dub, I hate this term, but like norms Mm -hmm. um, are kind of sniffing around subcultures and things. Yep. Um, I mean, I've seen it even in like, I I guess this could be, this could relate to video. I don't, are you into any like underground cinema stuff? Not too much. I watch a lot of like uh, I watch like documentaries and I watch a lot of YouTube stuff. And so I feel like uh, I end up watching freelance documentaries that probably Mm -hmm. have a similar thing to underground cinema. Yeah, just like they are not the traditional way of shooting. It's Mm -hmm. one person figuring out their style and their thing that makes it kind of guerrilla and unique and diverse. And yeah, that's crazy. I just watched one last night. Oh yeah, about the smiley face murders, and it was like. uh, 
I think it was a mockumentary. I don't think it was real, but mm-hmm. it was like, you know, in the middle of it, dude died. Mm-hmm. And then his friend picked up the documentary and like kept it going. Cool, but I was yeah. like, oh, wow, this is like cool. So, but I'm seeing like more norms would know about stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know, than I would see maybe like five or six years ago. Are you running into that in your field or? Kind of. I think the the interest the, the biggest example to me is like the Post Malones and Billie Eilish's of the world. Yes, where they are yeah. the forefront of pop, but they look nothing like pop stars that yeah. we're accustomed to. Yeah. Uh, and so I think yeah, it's interesting to watch it kind of cross pollinate and then yeah. slowly trickle down. You would assume that it only gets yeah. more extreme. And yeah, we saw I hate talking about Lauren Shore. I feel like I bring up all the time, but they were just yeah. like Lala again, yeah, Lollapalooza or Coachella or wherever the it's, hell they were. It's yeah, uh, that's they were, and it was huge. Yeah, and I think the more that <laughs> yeah. happened, yeah, I think it's a, a wild world and a weird one but for it's, us. It's like yeah, a, a scene that's strange. built on being underground and niche and yeah, kind of tight knit, and it's yeah. like we're starting to see it pop up in these places that no longer fits that bill we're used yeah. to. Uh, which is probably yeah great for everyone. I think the rising tide lifts all ship thing. I is think here. it's good and bad, but of course I think yeah. it's good. Well, because I mean, I we even saw, I mean, I check on Instagram like that. You know, I don't know if you know the band Scowl. They're like a they're a great band, okay. uh, like a hardcore band, hardcore punk band. And Billie Eilish was watching their set. They played Coachella, and Billie Eilish is watching. And I'm looking at like <laughs> you know my friends. That's wild. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at my friends like Instagram stories, and it's like yeah, Billie Eilish is vibe. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I think they watched like Knock Loose. Yeah. And, um, you know, like you're saying, these people are like two or three degrees away from us. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I'm like, this is, life is getting crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, like the world is getting nuts, <laughs> but in a, in a cool and also kind of scary way. As a yeah. fan of music, how has that changed you? So for me, yeah, I've, as I've around the industry, it becomes more familiar, the mm-hmm. people, the faces, and the, at least at the Billie Eilish, is suddenly two or three degrees of separation yeah. away, which is still far. It's not like we're going to cross yeah, yeah. I'm not top and drop tomorrow, but like, with, yeah. it's your 14 year old self, your 10 year old self yeah. would have been like, no, like it would have <laughs> seemed like this foreign, crazy yeah. world. As you've now kind of, yeah, you've toured, you've been in these places, you've rubbed elbows with some people, and I assume you've met some bands you grew up listening to and rubbed yeah. elbows with them. Like, how mm-hmm. has that changed the way you consume music? Are you still a fan of it? Can you still be a fan of it? Do you? It's really a great question. Um, so, yeah, for sure. But I have noticed that. So, my favorite band of all time is Sixpence None the Richer. They sing that song, Kiss Me. Um, and Lee Nash is the singer. And, you know, uh, they, they weren't, I'm noticing that they, I mean, they weren't my favorite, favorite band for my whole life. I really, they were my band that kind of like, as I got older, I was like, whoa, I never stopped listening to this and I love it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm noticing now that I gravitate and I, I think everyone does this to an extent, but I'm really gravitating to, you know, the music that was coming out when I was growing up the late nineties, early two thousands. And, um. It's it when I consume like listen to music that's newer now. It feels to me um, like a copy of a copy of a copy. Um, you know what I'm saying? So you're a magician who knows the trick. All of a sudden, is yeah. How it feels and to and, me. Yeah. and another big thing, I was like, oh wow, I can just follow Lee Nash on Instagram. Mm-hmm. You know, and I've messaged her. You know, being like, hey, I really love your music. I know this is weird because you, I'm like some random dude and that if she were to look at my profile, I sing in a death metal band yeah. that is very different. You're in a Christian, <laughs> you know, rock band or, yeah. and, and a like kind of like country singer, but you know, she would, re- she has responded to me. I'm like, Whoa. So as things are kind of like meshing together now, the, the curtain is being lifted and you're and which I think is great mm-hmm. because I think it was like a really weird toxic thing to have like celebrities and, people romanticize these other people and don't realize it's like this isn't a character this is a person you know and uh i think we're in a really unique intersection to be able to appreciate that they are people yes and Uh, and appreciating art in a real way now because now i can be like okay so this isn't some mythical person or sorry mythical being Mm -hmm. this is just uh the i mean this is just a person that is out here but did create this incredible thing Mm -hmm. and you can kind of it helped me appreciate the stuff that I love more. And I'm at a point now that I've been creating music and meeting the people that I grew, you know, grew up listening to, to some extent. I haven't met a lot of them, but I've, I mean, we did a tour with a band called integrity who I loved, Mm -hmm. you know, I still love. That was like a great shout out to it who, um, 
and and we ended up talking to them and create it was it was nuts you know what i mean it was just so crazy to eat barbecue with them yeah and uh it has been really awesome to be able to then go back and reabsorb all the stuff mm -hmm. so it's been cool and um and it's been it's helped me appreciate my friends bands a lot yep you know like a band called vane um, I've just loved that band even more and more and more because it was weird when I first would listen to it because it was like, oh, these are like the young kids, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And they're my friends. And now I can see how beautiful and amazing it is with like Vane and another band called Fuming Mouth. Like I can really be, and I think that's because of where we're at mm -hmm. and what I've done. I'm like, I can really appreciate that music so much more and love it and, and understand it, I think, better, uh, you know? I have a little tangent here that'll circle us back, yeah. but uh, I started this before we, I think before we were probably started that I was tired uh, and still yeah. half asleep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's, yeah, four, three o'clock in the afternoon yeah. for anyone listening, so it's not a time to be sleepy. <laughs> uh, I, I woke up this morning in Maine. Yeah. Uh, I was oh, at a respect. show last night. Uh, uh, last night I shot Jeremiah at a college yeah. show. Whoa. The birthday sex guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Uh, but That's it. seeing him was like a we were talking about kind of meeting your heroes and I've always yeah. had the thing of like, not that he is my hero, yeah. but it's cooler to see him now. It's like, Oh, you're human. And I can relate to that. Yeah. The week before we had a trippy red at UConn. Yeah. And that was a person who I saw and it was the first person in so long who didn't feel real to me. Yeah. And yeah. it struck me as this, like uh, this wild thing of like, Oh, I feel like I've met my heroes on some level yeah, and, yeah. Rubbed up and they've become human. And then, I felt like I'd kind of done it. And it's like, oh, maybe, yeah, they're all the same. And then to see another tier was yeah. like, oh, fuck, there's still, like, tiers of humans that we haven't even considered yeah. in a while. Yeah. Um, that's That must have been but nuts. It was weird. It was the first person in a while who, like I said, just didn't I'm, – I'm this close to him, right? I'm yeah, in the yeah. reach of him. That's but just, crazy. like, does not feel real in some – and I don't know how to express like, – yeah. it was just a – Strange. Uh, yeah, just this kind of transcendent thing where he yeah. just didn't – care about us didn't feel like he yeah. was just like in this sold out arena yeah just not giving a fuck yeah. and it was a really weird <laughs> yeah. thing as we are talking about being jaded by or not jaded but kind of yeah. like, uh, comfortable and acclimated to our local scene yeah it's like that gets so weird as it keeps scaling and scaling yeah, it and does i don't know i've mm -hmm. uh, gained a lot of empathy for i remember being 16 and hearing justin bieber racing through miami and crashing cars and being yeah. an idiot yeah. and i was like dude you have it all keep yeah, it together yeah, yeah. And now it's like, oh, dude, that that's yeah. a level of fame to break anyone. Yeah, exactly. It's, it, it's, that's crazy to think. Yeah, and I yeah. think there's some glory in the metal of like there's mm -hmm. a, a perfect level of fame where you yeah. can be famous within these venue walls. Mm -hmm. And then you go to CVS across the street and you're suddenly not famous anymore. Yeah, and you can – Which you is kind of like the perfect sweet spot to me. It's like the ideal yeah. place to be. I wish I could have that. Uh, I wish I – that's what I wish I had too. Yeah. Like you, you're, you're you know famous enough where you can like – make enough money and yeah. then you don't have to worry about yeah. like some weirdo yeah like doing something strange <laughs> it's great you know what we actually my uh dell and i met our friend who's like uh he's like a he's a bigger like uh youtuber mm -hmm. person and um this is someone that i've been a fan of for like a long time mm -hmm. and even like on some some weird like he makes like like funny videos and i remember just being you know like i was, I was homeless a lot and i was living at my job and i was just like wake up at like 3 a.m. and watch some of his videos to like try and just ground myself and make my feel better. And then we all met and hung out at a show and um, he brought his friend and we like, he watched us play and had fun. We were like went to an anime store and it was like, this is, to me, I'm like, I'm like trying not to freak out, but um, she's, she's better friends with them than I am. They're like yeah. friends, but uh, it, it was crazy. And that was also a point where I really wanted to nerd out. Yeah. I really wanted to, but then yeah. I was like, at the same time, I'm like, that would ruin the vibe and make everything super uncomfortable and strange. And mm -hmm. then I started to feel for him a lot. I was like, wow, that sucks, dude. Yeah. Like imagine, especially being on tour, like there's days where you're not. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, you're, yeah. Like, you're like, brother, I'll sign your CD. Yep. But if I could end it, <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I would. Yeah. But, um, you know, imagine I'm like imagining him feeling one of those days and then somebody like comes up and like, quotes a video or something i'm like man i feel for you that sucks bro yeah. like that's yeah. that's tough but i love your work keep making it <laughs> <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know yeah but damn yeah yeah and the, yeah like you're saying like now i'm gonna put that on a justin bieber level you know you're 14 yeah and you got like some especially in the industry you meet a lot of slimy 
<laughs> and again, I must scale as you yeah. go. Uh, on the vomit fourth level, when you wake up and it's Saturday morning and you've been on tour for too damn long and you're going to be home in three days and you're ready to go and uh, one of your bandmates who will remain nameless is annoying yeah. the hell out of you for whatever dumb reason that's yeah. not valid at all, but you've just been in the same band together for yeah. too long. How do you keep it together when you have to get on stage and say, hi, Nashville, I'm happy to be yeah. here, when you're like, dude, I don't want to be here yeah. at all? It's It's tough. I mean, I don't. It's, I can only speak to that to an extent because I don't really get annoyed with them. They definitely get annoyed with me. <laughs> I think I'm the annoying one. Okay. But, uh, you know, it, there are definitely times where I'm, where I'm struggling. And yeah. that's – those are the times I kind of am thankful for even though it's not easy. Mm-hmm. I look at it kind of like working out, which, I mean, I'm not in great shape. I don't work out a lot. But it's like you got to push through it. Those are when you do the reps that matter. Yep. You know, that's when you're going to, like, become a better performer. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I remember there was one – where uh, I think it was in Virginia, like our last show. I was not feeling good. I was like f- fucked up in the head emotionally. And uh, this spot in Virginia is always crazy for us. And we played and it was nuts. And uh, But it was one of those ones I had to push for and fight for. Yeah. And uh, But when you do push and you fight, it it's, it's kind of a unique relationship you have yep. with your performer and the attendee. And, you know, the observer um, where you feed off each other and, and in a way help each other, you know, that you don't even realize you're doing. It. That's why I think is really important and cool about music to kind of recognize that and um, that both both parties are very much uh, essential. And also uh, this is a very special experience. Yeah. You know? So how I get through is that is, is remembering that it's not just about me, you know. Yeah. There's people who drove and paid money to literally look at me, act psychotic, you know. Yeah. And I want to make sure that I can, because I'm the only one really who can tailor that experience, you know. <laughs> yeah, so one of my neighbors take a shower yeah. right now. No, no respect, respect, respect to up, them. dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, no, we're chilling. Uh, I don't, yeah. I, the mics won't even hear it, so I yeah. just ruined it for no reason. No, that's but cool. That's though. cool. That's cool yeah. as hell. Audio stuff. Uh, people need to learn. Absolutely, dude. Me too. <laughs> I am people. Um, oh, I had a question there. Uh, being motivated when we're not feeling motivated. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, the relationship with the with the crowd. Uh, for me, I think yeah. the other piece that's important to remember is that when I'm – uh, when I'm a fan at a show and I'm yeah. watching five bands, yeah. mathematically one of those band members is having that experience. Of, oh, for sure. Right? If there's yeah. five bands, there's 25 people coming yeah. on the stage that night. Like one of them is, and as a spectator, you stand there and watch them go, "Holy mm. hell, they're crushing, they're killing, they look big yeah. and powerful up there." And at least, probably more, but at least mm. one of those guys on the inside didn't feel <laughs> that way. Yeah. You uh, know what's? And I think that's always a weird thing of like, yeah, just how yeah. out of touch we can be mm-hmm. with each other. Yeah. It's crazy, actually. I'm glad you brought that up. There's uh, a band. They were a bigger band, and the singer passed away, and I had met him once. Mm-hmm. And um, he gassed me up like crazy. And and this is somebody that I ripped off. Mm-hmm. You know, not like not like in the way that I sound, but his cadence was like very important to me, and I didn't even realize how important it was. And uh, influential is the word was, you want to yeah, say. He, but ripped he, off is more fun to say. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. But but um, you know, it was to the point where in a couple songs where I'm like, I didn't even realize it, and I was like, damn, <laughs> you know. But uh, I didn't. He made me feel so good. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, this is crazy. And we hung out really hard uh, in New York, and. Um, I could sense that he was struggling and we did, but, um, at then, you know, he did end up passing away and that was like really tough and it kind of messed with me. Mm-hmm. I wasn't like super close with him, but that moment stuck with me Yeah, because this, this is a, this is a dude who's, who'd been on tour way longer than I ever will be. Yep. Um, I mean, hopefully not ever will be. I hope, hope I can get to their level. Yeah. I don't know if I ever will, but. Uh, that dude was struggling so hard that he – and I had no idea. Mm-hmm. I had no idea. And yeah. um, it really put a lot of things in perspective yeah. with stuff like that, especially being in the same vocation. So uh, it's crazy. It's really – and I, I don't know if you have that really in your profession. Do you ever – 100%. Yeah, dude. yeah. There's yeah, a moment on. on the way to 98% of video shoots yeah. where I'm loading the car going, oh, fuck. 
<laughs> like, I, what? where am I going? How yeah. is it going to go? Why, yeah. why me? How am I going to do this? I don't want to do this. I want to go home. I want to yeah. play RuneScape. And it's like, yeah. that won't make me happy. None of that's good. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, my brain short circuits for... Yeah. There was definitely uh, a couple years ago, like a much more gnarly version of anxiety of that where I was like throwing up before every shoot and like every shoot Whoa. was like a like a physical battle to get through. Yeah, yeah. And it's this weird dilemma of like, you're giving me your hard-earned cash to be yeah. here. And I feel like I want to be home in bed laying yeah, down. Yeah, I <laughs> but I need to yeah. also convince you that your money was well spent and that it went to a good place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, definitely I can relate on some level of like, yeah, you got to put up a game face. And I would assume that I left most of those shoots with them saying, Peter was here. He had a great time. It was fun. Yeah. And I left going, wow, <laughs> there's a miracle that <laughs> yeah. I survived that one. Yeah. I mean, uh, dude, you like in um, Philly, you killed it. So I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. That probably was one that would have been tough around that time. Uh, dude, you were, but, you were on. Very yeah. professional, very on it. Um, I appreciate that. But yeah. yeah, I think I can relate on some level. Like, yeah, you you do it. And I guess my audience is the band members and your audience mm-hmm. is the crowd. But it's, yeah. uh, I think, a similar thing. If it is symbiotic, we are feeding yeah. off of each other. And yeah, if the crowd is not happy, the band is not happy, I can't yeah. do it. And like, there's, yeah, similar symbiosis there. Um, I think it's, I don't even think it's similar. I think it's the same. Yeah. I think it's the exact same thing. Yeah. I mean, it, because. Bro, if you showed up and you were whack, yeah, I'd be like, okay, <laughs> well, 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 this sucks. You yeah, know? <laughs> like I don't want to do this ever yeah. again. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and um, it's that's like okay, if I show up and I play and I'm whack because I'm sad or whatever, you, you might not come back and you might not buy a shirt. Yep. I need you to do both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, so it's the same thing, man. It's yeah. the same thing. That's what's crazy. I mean, we talked about it a little bit. Like it's the same. It's not, but it is like the same mm-hmm. exact at its core. It's the same thing, different tools. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had a part two to that thought, but I don't remember what it was. Shit, it's my fault. Um, that's all good. No, you're mad. Um, <laughs> I'm mad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're, pissed. You're, you're pissed. You're pissed. Um, later. Oh, I had a big brain fart. This is the lack what? of sleep catching up. To yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, wait, where in Maine? Uh, University of New England. Oh, Bitterford. Man. Main. I got to get on that college like circuit somehow. Three and a half, four hours. Yeah. Yeah, was, yeah but they had money. The universities do. always have money. Dude. They, they always just yeah. give you crazy money. For the artists, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's got to be unbelievable for them to want to go there. I, I remember, yeah. this is a long time ago, there, I lived near Smith College. I don't know if you know where that is. It's in Northampton, Massachusetts. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, they booked some band. They were bad. I don't remember. It was like this is this is when like lo-fi uh kind of indie pop was happening and they're like there's a lot of bands I really didn't like that like uh Beach House was really big and stuff like that. It was a band like that. And they gave them like some insane amount of like $10,000. Like yeah. even I think even more. I think that was just for like one thing. Yeah. And I was like, "Yo, we get like $100 for my, I... for food." <laughs> like, I'm aware of some numbers I'm not comfortable saying yeah. uh, on a recording, but afterwards I'll chat. And I yeah. think I think it's a gross, wild underestimation yeah. of what some of these guys are getting. In oh, the context for sure. Of yeah. Jeremiah last night, like I don't know the number, I didn't yeah. see it, but I have a guess in my brain, and it's way above yeah. what you were guessing. <laughs> that circuit's um, weird too because it's not. Weird. There's no merch. No, they don't really care about merch. That's why yeah. I think they have to pay exorbitant money because it's like yeah. no one wants to come play for a college. They'd rather be at the bar. They'd rather yeah. be playing to. People who are of age, they yeah, sell yeah. alcohol to their yeah, crowd. Yeah. Like they really sell T-shirts, merch. Yeah. yeah. So I think to to make all of that worth it, and like normally there's tour, there's routing. When you're yeah. playing this, you're coming right for this one show, yeah. and it's like, yeah, you're you're not going to New York City. You're going to middle of nowhere, Maine. Yeah. Like, there's yeah. money just for the place you don't want to be. Yeah. yeah <laughs> sort exactly. of something. But um, I mean, I, was it a cool town? It was cool. I think all New England feels like Connecticut to me, which is yeah, always like I've enjoyed. Uh, I guess, yeah, it's a good question for you to have enjoyed traveling more and getting a sense of how similar and how different all the world is. So I've spent a lot of time in the yeah. South. There's my other place that I've uh, in Louisiana in the last couple of months or last couple of years. Oh, yeah. um, I worked with a band down there. Uh, so I've spent yeah, a month down there a couple different times Yeah, um, or whatever. Uh, but I really enjoyed, yeah, getting a sense of like how much similar and how much difference there was in the world. Yeah. And yes, yeah, tr- you travel, you get the sense of like, Oh, this world is way bigger than I thought it was. And also Kind of not that much bigger than I thought yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, that's that's I I I go more towards the latter. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've toured across the pond like once. It was mm-hmm. a long time ago. It was 2013. But um, 
Yeah, it's weird. That's the only place where I was like, whoa, the world is crazy. Like, I've been, I think, to every state except for two or three. And um, I'm not going to say they're all the same because they're not. I love them all for their own certain things. But, uh, yeah, I noticed that, like, I mean, I live in Waterbury and I hate it. I fucking hate Waterbury. And then there's times where I'm like, I feel like everywhere is Waterbury. It's <laughs> yeah. just all Waterbury. But After there's... seeing all the places, is uh, Connecticut like your home base for the future, you think? Or do you expect yourself to end up in Texas, I, Florida, California, or somewhere else that's I, appealing? Yeah, I hope not. I don't like <laughs> – I don't really like it here, to be honest. There's yeah. there's elements I like. I like. I mean, I have a lot of friends here, but – yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. The only other we were in Des Moines, Iowa, mm-hmm. which I thought would suck, and it was so sick. Interesting. That's not one I never would have thought of. What made it cool? Like I've never everything. I feel like I've talked to all the band people now. I'm always yeah. curious where you were, how to go. And I've never heard a single person be like, "Yo, Des Moines, Iowa, okay, yeah. was the spot." So, <laughs> so we yeah, so we, we played there one time before on like our first long tour with the old lineup, and it was horrible. I hated the venue, hated everybody. They were like rushing us, and I was like, "Yo, fuck yeah. this place, I'm never coming back." Of course, we came back on this tour, <laughs> but it was different. Everything was awesome. Hell yeah. Um, I was like, I remember during one of our songs, Pain Tolerance, in the beginning of it. I know that one, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you know in Pain Tolerance, <laughs> in the beginning, there's not a lot of lyrics. Yeah. I was just singing Slipknot over it, and it was sick. Everyone was hyped on it. We were, the show was crazy. People were moshing. It was nuts. And I was like, whoa, this is way different. And <laughs> That's like- we had an off day. And the next show was two hours away, or three hours. So mm-hmm. it was like we stayed there for like three days. And... There was this place called Jay's CD and Hobby, and on tour, like, our band is not really a party band. We don't party, but if there's, like, a dungeon, like, a uh, Magic the Gathering mm-hmm. store or something, like, a hobby store where you can get old anime and video games and Magic cards, we're there. So we're <laughs> always looking, and there was a place called Jay's CD and Hobby. It had everything. That's where all the huge. guarantees go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was huge. We spent way too much money there. Hell but yeah. the hall was crazy. Hell like, yeah. I got, like, a lot of really cool shit there. Um, a bunch of games I've been looking for for a long time. And I don't know much about Magic. It's not literally my thing. But, like, you know, Jet and Bailey, who play guitar and bass, they're, that's their shit. Mm. And, uh, and Nick loves, like, old records. It had records. He like all, he like all the dollar bin funk records that nobody knows. He has all of them. <laughs> That's so sick. He's like, yeah, these records. That's a crazy. good hobby to have, like from a financial standpoint, like to be into one dollar records. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but he'll also go for like the crazy shit. True, like, yeah, he, but win. yeah, I mean, it's been that was crazy. And there was we went to every single location. There was three locations. We went to all of them. Hell yeah. <laughs> and uh, food was crazy. Had all there's a bunch of vegan food. There's a bunch of like. Japanese food that was really good. Like we got sushi. Uh, I think no, there's no ramen. I love ramen, but uh, all the food was good. There was this cafe that we went to, like literally every day mm-hmm. for coffee. That was insane. Interesting. Um, it was like a big city without all the people. Huh. No stress. It was awesome. That's really cool. I've never heard Dude. anyone say anything about Des Moines, Iowa, good or bad. Like, no Bro. one even cares about it, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> no. I'm laughing. There's, like, there's like 12 people who listen to these episodes, and yeah. I'm laughing that one of them is going to be from Des Moines, Iowa. Yo, whoever's in Des Moines, yo. <laughs> you did it. Yeah. Mr. <laughs> you did it. You did it. Uh, um, yeah. Love Des Moines. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, also in the Midwest, you guys played uh, LDB Fest, correct? Yeah, that was crazy. How was that, dude? That's Psycho. that's one of those that I want to go to at some point. You have like, to. Yeah, there's – yeah, very dude, few. Dude, you could uh, definitely get a, like a credential and film it. You should do that more. I would I would like to uh, – I, I always say I would like to. I Yeah, amongst dude, all the things I end up planning and doing, I don't know. But at some point. We need you to do that. At some point, we'll make it happen. <laughs> we need you because there's a couple people who film shows that uh, all do a great job. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one specifically who I who films us on the West Coast all the time is one nine seven media. Mm-hmm. He is so great. Absolutely. We yeah. we ha I mean you should really if you filmed shows, I think you would fucking kill it. I just did one for uh Euclid, uh their new uh deathcore band. I'm so bad at genres, yeah, so they're I'm, gonna be mad I'm if I said it. it wrong. But <laughs> um, but what yeah, are they I called? Did one, uh Euclid. They're a new I don't know. They're formerly members of In Depths and Tides and some other bands. I don't know. Um but yeah, they're homies. I should a live okay. set for them with live audio, uh, multicam live set. So it's something I've done in the past. Uh, it's something that is fun. Dude, um, if you went to LDB and I don't that, know, it sounds sick though. It, that like it just looks so sick. The festival just seems like there's just bro. energy in the air, and I guess it's a testament to Knock Loose and the 
the culture they created in that area. Oh, man, it's uh, that. Is but, a, yeah, it seems yeah. just like the biggest homie fest. And I don't even know if my homies are there, but it seems like all the homies are there. Um, I think they are. I don't know. Yeah. I didn't really, like, I, I ended up making a lot of new friends. That's what I'm people. saying. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I don't even um, know if I know yeah. anyone there, but I would go there and be a homie fest. It, yeah, it was. It's friends of friends. Yeah. That's how it was. And then yeah. we ended up just kind of, like, I ended up chilling with a lot of people who I had never met. And, like, I got, there's this band called Raw Brigade, and mm-hmm. I don't know them really. I like their music, but, um. We got hot dogs together, and uh, we were just, like, talking about stuff. And I was like, oh, these guys are fucking awesome. Uh, hell, yeah. Um, it was crazy. Yeah. It was so crazy. And um, there, in, like, there's a – what do you say? Isn't it, like, a skate park or something? Not anymore. Okay. So it's grown so much, hell so yeah. much. I mean, th- that team is incredible. Uh, there was, like, 2,000 people there. I it, saw some of the streams. Yeah, yeah it, it was not, sick. like – like the old ones. Hell yeah. So like it's just been – I mean the the skate park I guess was the golden year. I, it's always a fest that I've seen videos of. I'm like, whoa, I'm fucking up by not going there. Yep. Yeah, and, me too. Yeah. And then this year when we played, like I get there and um, one of the guy who, who – guys who runs it, his name is Colin, who's, who's a really – he's a great guy. Um, he's a friend. Uh, I won't say we're like best friends in the world, but I consider him a really great person. He's a good friend. I like him. And uh, I just haven't known him that long. He – like was you could not talk to him he was so stressed because it was so big and he was i was like hey colin he's like (laughs) (laughs) just like walks and um it dude it was crazy people with walkie talkies running around like huge video wall like and i mean they had it down they had it down it was so good um there's also a a pod dude you should really go there (laughs) even if you just like could network with some people like there's just there's this podcast happening right now that's really awesome called hard lore it's like um it's it's like the dude from Twitching Tongues, and it's Colin from Twitching Tongues, and mm-hmm. then and then Bo from Harm's Way, and they 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 were like doing a hard lore thing while they were there, That's cool. and they streamed the whole thing on Twitch, yep. um, and Hate Five Six was there, who's who's great, the king, you know, yeah, um, yeah, has strongest arm like ever because <laughs> he's just like filming like crazy Dude, he's incredible he's yeah, truly a sight. i don't know him i never really met him the same i'd love to sit he, down and chat with him one day you yeah. dude he i think he'd probably be uh, up to i don't know him like that but i don't either yeah my i'm a i remember i'm pretty sure he 3d printed his own yeah. like switcher device to be able to film multi games yeah his live and he i'm butchering this and i i, yeah. I feel a Bad saying it on air because I saying it off air is yeah. cool to be wrong, but on air <laughs> yeah. it's like fuck. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think he like made like a multicam switcher so he could live switch them to the different cameras and have that feed Whoa. be edited, so he didn't have to go back later and like put them all together Whoa. and edit it. I believe he three D printed like his own little gizmo there, and yeah. that is like Dude, I don't psycho. know where I would. It obviously doesn't exist on the market for him yeah. to print one, but it's like I don't even know where I would start. I don't know what the and then to. Actually, yeah. engineer the thing is so many light years out of yeah, he's my understanding. Crazy. I, 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 like I said, I don't know him like that. Uh, yeah. I've only run into him a couple times. Yeah, but uh, he's a really smart dude, and yeah. I don't know how he's. I mean, he's been doing it for years and years. He's, yeah, he's great. King, yeah, but um, he was. But that's what I'm saying. You should go because he wasn't the only person. But yeah. um, yeah, he was there, and uh, yeah, it was dude LDB man, <laughs> incredible. Yeah. Shout out. That's actually where I met. I met some members of Knocked Loose. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were very nice. Yep. And they they put that state. I mean, not just them. There was other bands in the past who didn't who helped a lot too. But I think they they was like Metallica for the bands who did it before, and they were Slayer. It was like yeah, you know. Now LDB, yeah. like I said, there was like two thousand people watching. Unbelievable. Us. Yeah. It, it was nuts. And um, the set was cool. Like in the beginning, this kid got rocked, <laughs> like knocked out bad. And I think that might have scared some people because then the mosh like went away. Because in the beginning, I think people were ready and they were yeah. like, "Oh yeah!" And then the dude gets like, and I was like, "Like I remember kind of seeing it from the corner of my eye and be like, oh, no.'" Yeah. <laughs> like, then uh, so then it starts to pick up again, and then right in the middle of our set, gets cut off, and the dude's like, "They're towing cars," and Damn. there's a mass exodus. Damn. And um, but. We saved it, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. the people did come back, and it, it, like, energy died down there a little bit, but then it just, like, progressively got back up and back up. So it was, it was an insane show, and like I said, made a lot of new friends, got to hang out with a lot of old friends. Um, and it, my friend Mark, who sings in the band Fuming Mouth, I hadn't seen him in a really long time, and it was just, like, so good, like, to just hang out with him. It kind of, like, <laughs> to, like, the second I saw him, I was like, nope, we're chilling. <laughs> you know, oh, like, yeah. we chilled really hard, and... Yeah, it was great. There, everybody has a booth there. Like, um, there's actually a lot of Connecticut dudes. Do you know what Days Records 
our boy Lumpy. He's from Long Island originally, but he has a great record label called Days. Oh, and yeah. um, they had a booth, also Streets of Hate from Hudson Valley. Like, my friend Alex runs that. I'll be there. I'll be there tw- next year, you 2024. Gotta go. LDB. You have to go. Uh, dude, that'd be so sick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, anything else coming up for Vomit Fourth? That's exciting. So we got a tour coming up in a couple days. Yeah. Um, damn. <laughs> yeah. We got a tour. I mean, I can only talk about like a couple. Of, of course. But yeah. yeah. So we do have a lot of stuff. We're basically booked till 2024. Fuck yeah. Dude. And uh, but we have a tour coming up with like this band called Ingested, and then one of our mm-hmm. bigger influences called Devourment, um, and then. Where where is that? Like East Coast, West Coast, full US? It's, no, no, we're only on the last run of it. It is okay. a long tour, but yeah. we're not on the whole thing. Got it. We're on the last end of it, and it's like uh, I, we're hitting the, we're hitting the Sonia, which is in Boston, yep. and then we're doing like Canada and like some other. I don't know. That that one's <laughs> cool. gonna be okay. awesome. If you, you if you if anybody is interested, you can check our social media or go to vomitforth.com. Perfect. Yeah, I but uh, yeah, that one's gonna be nuts. Oh yeah, the more yeah. touring through the rest of the year. Yeah, we're we're <laughs> going everywhere. Yeah, we have like this one, which is short, and then another really long one that I can't say, and then uh, another short one. Hell yeah! And we also have, actually, sorry, we're playing a fest called Hell in the Harbor in okay. Baltimore, coming up the on my birthday. It's uh, May twenty seventh, and it's like crazy bands like Cannibal Corpse, Pig Destroyer, like that is going to be nuts. But Hell Internal yeah. Bleeding. Yeah, that one's going to be cool. That's what we have coming up. And then a new record. New that record. That is almost all written, sort of. And then we're <laughs> going to go into the studio. Hell yeah. Yeah. It's going to be psych- psychotic year. Psychotic year. Hell yeah. That's yeah. a good good time to be busy. I hope so. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. It is. But it's like, I don't know. I'm tired. I feel like <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. Hell yeah. Dude. That's a good yeah. place to wrap up and we'll get into the off-air catch-up, which yeah. is always a more fun yeah. part of the <laughs> yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. um, hell yeah, dude. So that, uh, vomitforth.com for any kind of tickets, tour yeah. dates, records. Yeah. Uh, where else can people find you? What else should they – yeah, anything you want to um, plug, promote, so, talk about? I mean, yeah, if you just go to vomitforth.com, there's there's links to everything, but you know our, our name on all social media is vomitforth. Really lucked out with that name. <laughs> really lucked uh, out. Where does the name come from? Do you have any idea? Yeah, yeah. It's what from an the... internal bleeding song. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's, that's like one of our biggest influences. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an internal bleeding lyric. Got yeah. It. Okay. That's where we got it from. I, so. I was trying to make sense of it in my head. That's what we were working on the video. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, yeah. yeah. What are these two words? I mean, mean, it also means to like, you know, it's like, you know, you're, you're vomiting for like, it's, it's not like, like about, well, no, it's like, you're talking too much. Ah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, you're, yeah. yeah. Spewing shit out of your mouth. Too yeah, often. yeah, a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's that's kind of like what it's interesting alluding to. Sort of. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it says we've chatted for an hour talking about how we yeah. spew too much bullshit out of our mouth. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Cut it. <laughs> yeah.